Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Ayato is finally getting his first rerun banner and it's a chance for longtime Ayato wanters to get him. There are probably newer players too who are curious about the value Ayato can add to their account. So I'm making this video to give you a quick rundown of what to expect before pulling for Ayato to help you determine if he's worth your primos. I'll be discussing his value as a unit, list down some important considerations, and hopefully answer some burning questions you might have. I do have a review of him from his release where you can learn more detailed info. While it's a good place to understand more of his kit and see some showcases, it was released before Dendro. Since then, there have been a couple of new teams and synergies he's pretty good with, which I'll touch on in this video. Of course, if you already have personal or subjective reasons to pull for him, then I would say go for it and know that you're getting a good character anyway. Now let's discuss what makes Ayato worth pulling. When it comes to talking about how strong Ayato is, I have a lot of good things to say. Ayato's main role is a Hydro DPS and Applicator who can make easy work of your enemies with his raw Hydro damage or by helping set up Hydro-related reactions. He has on-field and off-field utilities that can be adapted depending on the team he's in. As an on-field unit, he can deal very fast and solid AoE damage while also continuously applying Hydro for reactions. In this role, the first thing you'll notice is how he's very easy to play. Unlike other DPSs that have specific optimal attack strings or who require you to spam the attack button, Ayato is simply a matter of activating his skill and holding to swing swing. Sure, it sounds lazy for some, but for me, seeing those rapid strikes while just holding the button is satisfying and easy damage. It helps that he has an innate means of increasing his interruption resistance. It's not a guaranteed immunity though, since strong enough attacks can still stagger him if you don't dodge, but it does make him a bit more forgiving giving to play on field, especially for less mechanically skilled players. Then, thanks to his burst which periodically deals hydro damage in an area for a long 18 second duration, he also has a source of off-field hydro application and damage. Aside from that, it also buffs normal attacks so you want that ability available as much as possible. It does have an 80 burst cost which means having to build ample ER, usually around 140-160%. to but at least there's his A4 passive that regenerates flat energy when he's off-field, which can help you manage his ER needs. While he's very easy to use and understand, he's also very free-to-play friendly to build. Although primarily attack scaling, Ayato's normal attacks partially scale from HP as well, making substat farming a bit more forgiving. Then, when looking at your artifact set options, the ever-reliable Gladiator's Finale is a top accessible option. You will passively farm it from bosses, and you can strongbox it as well, making it very efficient to target. The Heart of Depths is another top choice for Ayato. It used to be only accessible via the Dragonspine domain, but it's thankfully been added to the strongbox too. Between these two sets, they have very close power levels with some marginal advantages depending on different scenarios. Ultimately, their substat quality matters more. You may also be wondering about the Echoes of an Offering set, which is supposedly his signature set released at the same time as him. However, there are notable caveats to this artifact. The biggest issue is that it's buggy if you have high ping, since its 4-piece effect doesn't trigger as often as it should compared to having low ping. Moreover, farming the artifact domain is somewhat inefficient, as it's shared with a Vermilion set which is only really viable on Shao. And it's also very, very close in terms of strength with the Gladiator's Finale and Heart of Depth sets. So ultimately, I personally recommend just avoiding this if you're starting from scratch. Then for his weapon, there are two solid free-to-play choices. The best free weapon is Kazuha's sword, the Kagutsurube Ishin, which is acquired by simply playing his story quest. Alternatively, you can use the Aminoma Kagiyuchi for the very nice aesthetics, which performs only very slightly lower than the Ishin. If you are a low spender that gets the battle pass, an R1 Black Sword will end up being his generally best 4-star weapon. It's got a good crit rate second stat, an NA damage bonus that synergizes with him, and a healing mechanic that helps a bit in keeping his HP up, especially in teams that don't have a dedicated healer. Additionally, Ayato can save you resources. You don't have to level his normal attack talent at all since his damage scalings come mainly from his skill and burst talents. And finally, he really does not need constellations. His first two are simply damage bumps and they're not huge enough to warrant aiming for compared to early constellations of some other 5 stars. So you don't have to feel like you're missing anything. C0 Ayato is already very, very capable. 
Another one of Ayato's biggest advantages is how versatile he is with team comps. As mentioned before, he has various on-field and off-field hydro utilities. Adapting them makes him quite flexible to fit in team templates that need a hydro unit. From his early release, he has already starred in many strong team templates, a hypercarry comp, vaporize, taser, freeze, and soup teams to name a few. And thanks to the reworked Hydro Resonance, Ayato gets a bit more value from the added HP when accompanied by a Hydro teammate. With the arrival of Dendro and Bloom reactions, Ayato's team templates have expanded to Bloom-based teams, which he performs very well in. In particular, he acts as a Hydro applicator that can set up Blooms for Hyper Bloom and Burgeon triggers on top of dealing his own raw damage. His different sources of Hydro also work to his favor. Since the burst is a slower way to apply Hydro, this can be beneficial in a Quick Bloom team where you don't want to disrupt the Quicken aura too much in order to combine Quicken, Aggravate, and Hyper Bloom reactions. But if you need faster application, then you add in his skill normal attacks, which helps with generating dendro cores or even cleanse enemies of pyro or burning. All this shows that Ayato was already a pretty versatile unit to start with, and even now he's still finding new teams to be great in. It shouldn't be a surprise, as Hydro units are quite valuable to Genshin's reaction system, and I'm fairly confident Ayato will be future-proofed for teams down the line. So those are the general expectations surrounding Ayato if you do pull for him. However, you may have more specific questions regarding him and other 5 stars you might be considering. One question I often encounter is, who should you choose between Ayato and Child? They are often compared to each other because they have many similarities. They both excel in AoE Hydro damage and can therefore enable many types of reaction teams. They do have some differences though. First of all, Child has a higher learning curve to his gameplay. Because of his skill cooldown mechanics, you have to learn how to time his on-field duration so that you don't overextend its cooldown. That would also mean optimizing attack strings to make the best of that field time, exploiting his riptide mechanics, learning proper rotations and timing, and more. That being said, learning the ins and outs of his gameplay certainly pays off, and it's a very engaging combat experience. But compare all of that to playing Ayato, where you just press his skill and hold the auto attack button, and there isn't even any need to learn attack combos. Ayato has a finite amount of on-field time and therefore has no danger of overextending his cooldown or rotations. So if you favor ease of gameplay and simplicity more, Ayato would be the better pick. Another key difference is that Child has front-loaded damage from his burst, while Ayato doesn't. Ayato is good for sustained damage that runs its course throughout the rotation, so in practice, Child could deliver a faster clear if his burst finishes off the last HP pool, while Ayato might need to enter another rotation or simply take longer. On the other hand, Ayato can be used as an off-field enabler while Child can't, which allows for more flexible team comping with Ayato. So consider all of these factors if you are still trying to decide whether to pull for Ayato now or to save up for an opportunity to get Child on whenever his next rerun is. But if you already use Child and are wondering whether it's still worth it to get Ayato with limited primos, the answer is, for me, not as much. While it's undeniable that Ayato is a great pull, he may end up ultimately being redundant with what Child does. More so, there are other Hydro units that might help diversify your Hydro roster further, such as Yelan for a dedicated off-field Hydro DPS, or Kokomi for a Hydro healer and driver. Of course, if you still think you really want both Ayato and Child, then it's not necessarily a bad thing, perhaps just not the most practical one. The choice is of course ultimately up to you. Another consideration would be the other 5 stars that we know are upcoming, Raiden and Alhatham. Raiden is running alongside Ayato, and if you don't have her yet, she is also an amazing pull. Aside from her arc on status, she is flexible as an electro DPS, battery support, and hyper bloomer, with her best teams being very, very strong. I have an older video discussing why Raiden is worth pulling and two guide videos on her. The most recent one covers her new broken Hyperbloom playstyle, which is the biggest benefit she's gotten from Dendro's introduction. But between Raiden and Ayato, it's honestly a tough choice. Subjective preferences aside, it might boil down to what you think your account needs. If it were me, I would consider if my Hydra roster is somewhat lacking. If so, Ayato is easy to recommend. But if you already are boasting good Hydro units or have your eye on other Hydro reruns, then the Raiden Shogun has already proven her worth as an excellent addition to any account. 
On the other hand, Raiden has had somewhat frequent reruns, especially relative to Ayato, whose upcoming banner will be his first rerun. So if you do want to eventually pull Raiden but your primos don't align this patch, the wait for her next banner might not be too long. The other upcoming 5 star to consider that has already been confirmed to arrive in version 3.4 is Dendro Daddy Alhatham, a sword user that I'm personally simping so hard for. We don't have much official info yet about his kit, but for now, I can say that he is yet another chance to expand your Dendro roster. However, as a new character, it will likely be some time after his release until evaluations about his power level, utility, and overall value will be solidified. If you're on the fence about these three, try waiting before this version ends until we get more info about the units in the next version to help you finalize your decision. But in conclusion, Ayato is a great unit that you can't go wrong with. He has many compatible team templates, requires a relatively low skill level to play, and is very solid in his DPS and Hydro Applicator roles. If he seems redundant with your current Hydro roster, he may not be the best use of your primos right now, especially with the other 5 stars surrounding his rerun. But I do hope this video cleared up at least some of your doubts, or helped you decide whether or not to bring home the very tall, very handsome head of the the Kamisato clan. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!